Here are some practical tips for resuspending bacterial cell pellets for protein purification. Different people have different preferences and strategies, so I'm going to tell you how I do it, as well as some variations that you might want to try. The basic idea is that you want to get pure protein, so you put the instructions for making the protein into bacteria and say, bacteria, make this protein for me. And if the bacteria are being nice, they oblige and they make lots of the protein, but now it's your job to get it out of the bacteria. The first thing you need to do is separate the bacteria from all the food that you are growing it in. So you spin it down, you remove the media, and voila, now you've got this pellet of bacteria. And you want to get pure protein out of that. What you're going to want to do is resuspend the pellet. So basically, you have this clump of bacteria and you remove the media, so it's a clump, but now you want to get it back in liquid, but liquid that you want. Clean liquid, not the liquid that's like the bacteria waste and stuff, all that stuff they excreted, all that media, all that gunk. You want to get rid of all of that, and now you want to resuspend it in clean stuff um, that is the buffer that you want for like your first purification step, typically. How are you going to do this? It's often harder than it sounds like it should be because that pellet is often not going to want to resuspend. It's going to want to stay pellety. Thankfully, a vortex and some pipetting can come to your rescue. Now, often you see in some sort of guide, you'll see like add 40 mils of media of the um, your buffer per liter of cells or something like that. Sometimes it goes by weight. It doesn't, I found it doesn't matter too much. Um, you want to make sure that you have enough to for it to lice like adequately, but don't like fret if you can't figure out the exact amount that you're supposed to add. I typically go for about 40 mils per liter of bacterial cells and it works well for me. So say that I have 500, I have a liter of cells. I grow a liter of bacteria and I spin it down and I have this liter pellet. And now I want to resuspend this in 40 mils. Typically, I'm not going to be able to spin down a whole liter of cells in a single bottle, so maybe I'll have like two bottles. So I have two bottles, I have two pellets, and I have um, 40 mils I want to resuspend it in. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to resuspend it in a partial volume because I want to ensure that I have a little extra meat, um, a little extra of the buffer that I can use to get the remnants out of the bottle. This will make more sense in a minute. So what I want to do is I want to put about a two-thirds volume into the bottles and resuspend it in that. So if I had 40 mils, that would be 20 mils per each of those two tubes. So maybe I'll put in like 16 or 17 mils. What I'll do is I'll add the buffer. Now, the buffer. Let's talk about this. Sometimes people will put the pro, you want to have a protease inhibitor in there when you lice the cells open. So when you break the cells open, you want to make sure there's protease inhibitor there to prevent any proteases, which are enzymes that can chew up the protein that you're trying to purify, which would be bad. So different protease inhibitors can be used and you can add the protease inhibitor before you freeze it or when you thaw it. In grad school, we, used, we added it before we froze it so that it was like right there already. Um, but we've been adding it after we thought this th now, and it seems to work okay, too. Okay, so you add the buffer, and now what are you going to do? Well, now you've got this buffer sitting on top of this pellet, and you've got to get the two to mix. What you I like to start with is a vortex. So it's nice if you have one of the vortexes where you can just kind of like set it on the on position, and now what you want to do is kind of use a pipette to help you, but don't don't pipette up and down at this point, or else you're just going to clog the pipette. Instead, use it more just like as a stick in order to kind of just declump stuff. So what you want to do is you put the buffer onto the cell pellet, stick it on the vortex, and kind of use that, um, use that pipette, move it around. You want to change the angle of the bottle around. So you can see there's kind of like that big clump I'm trying to get rid of. So I'm using that pipette, I'm scraping, I'm mixing, I'm turning the bottle. Um, you it's, don't want to put the bottle just like straight down. You want to put it at an angle, really get that nice vortex going. Once you've got it fairly declumped, then you want to go up and down. You want to triturate with your um, with a serological pipette. Hopefully you have a pipette man, um, one of these electronic ones makes it way easier. It can be a real pain if you're trying to do it with one of those like scroll wheels. Um, I can tell you that for sure. 
Um, but that in that way, you're able to remove one to the clumps. It can also be helpful to kind of like blow out further than um, just, just out so that you're kind of making it mix that way as well, if that made sense. Once you've got it all resuspended, now you want to transfer it over to a um, to a tube. So hopefully you have thought ahead and you actually have the tube unscrewed. That was not a very good example, but thankfully I've gotten very good at doing things with my left hand and my right hand. Comes with a lot of practice in the lab. So you can see that I have multiple pellets and I'm going to like combine them. Depending on your volume, you might want to put them in multiple tubes. So I have a couple tubes because I had a couple um, of different cultures going and stuff like that. But you do the same thing for each of these. You want to get the bulk of it out. You want to get rid of all those big clumps, get it all resuspended. Don't worry at this point if there's a little bit left in the bottle when you go and you transfer it over. Because that's why you saved a little of the buffer that you're going to add next. What you want to do before you go into that buffer is get make sure you have a clean tip. So kind of keep strategically keep your tip so that you can use one for the cells and one for the buffer so that you're not having to go into the buffer with the clean buffer bottle with your dirty tip, but you're not using more tips than you need. So now I'm going to take the last few um, mils of the buffer that I had saved, and I'm going to add them to the bottle with that little remnant of the pellet in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of like go up and down around the bottle, try to get all of that out. So by adding a little extra liquid, I'm able to really kind of wash off the bottle. I can um, take it that same wash from one bottle, put it in the other bottle to get it out of all of the bottles and voila. Now I've got my pellet resuspended. The next step is going to be to freeze it. Freezing is a place where people have different strategies. So I typically just freeze it in these, in um, like 50 mil conical tubes. And these are easy to store in the freezer. They're not the best for thawing. <clears throat> so how I thaw them is I typically put them in like a liter bottle, a liter um, beaker with a stir bar with like room temperature water. And I just let it stir or you can put it in like a water bath. For bacterial cells, you can go ahead and put it at like 37. Um, for moment, for like insect cells and stuff, we typically do like 25 or so. But what you want to do is just like let it thaw um, before you go and do anything further with it. If you want to make it easier to let it thaw, what some people do is actually they freeze it in like a Ziploc bag. I'm a little wary of Ziploc bags, um, and so I haven't tried that personally. Um, but in that way, you can kind of make it flat, and that'll make it easier to thaw, but then you just have to kind of be strategic when you're thawing it. Um, some people actually just freeze it directly in the bottle. You can do that if you have a lot, a lot of centrifuge bottles, but if you don't have a lot, a lot of centrifuge bottles or you don't know when you're going to use this pellet, um, it makes sense to transfer it to a different tube. Whatever tube you use, be sure that it's kind of like safe for um, whatever storage conditions you're going to have, whether that's um, typically you're going to be like flash freezing them in liquid nitrogen and then sticking them in the minus 80. So you want to make sure your tubes can withstand that. Yes, you want to do the um, like the flash freezing to make prevent like ice crystals, prevent things like proteases from getting into action um, before you actually freeze it. If you don't have liquid nitrogen or something, it's not the end of the world. If you just go stick it in the freezer, it'll probably be fine. Different proteins are pickier than others and stuff like that. Um, so I can't promise you that everything will be okay. But a lot of the times really, um, we kind of stress and stress and stress trying to make, find the perfect way to do things. And there's actually many ways that it'll actually work. Speaking of many ways that'll actually work, if you ha do have one of those like proteins that's really prone to protease chewing and stuff like that, what you might want to do is before you actually freeze the cells, you actually do a wash. So you resuspend it, then you spin it again and you resuspend it and then you transfer and freeze it. Now, as you can imagine, based on how I have a whole video talking about tricks for resuspending your cell pellets, that can be a bit of a pain. But it removes the proteases that might be in the media because these bacteria, especially if you're like overgrowing them, you're stressing them out, they're going to be secreting proteases into the media. And so you want to make sure that you're removing as much of the media as possible. And so washing it can help with that. This can also, washing the cells, polyps is also really common if you're trying to do things um, 
or not bacterial cells, but other kinds of cells where you're trying to do sensitive measurements or something like this, you want to make sure that you're removing anything that's in the media. But for your typical expression, we, we typically don't do that. Another thing, some people, instead of resuspending the pellet now, they'll resuspend it when they thaw it. That's fine too. Um, again, different people have different strategies. That way, um, one nice thing about that way is you have less that you need to kind of store, but you have to like scrape your pellet out of wherever it is or just freeze the pellet in the bottle that it was in, which again gets you into that problem of like the having um not having enough bottles but i guess like that that way you can actually just like scrape it off into like a ziploc or something like that and freeze it which would probably be a simpler way um to freeze things in the bag rather than having resuspended it and frozen it in a bag i've never actually tried the freeze in the bag method um but again some people say that's that works well it's easier to thaw um it takes up less room in your freezer and stuff like that just make sure you have a really good organization system whatever you choose to do um and so hope this helped you